Hi, everyone. Hi, all you beautiful souls that are joining us for today. This is Emmy from Feminine Revered, and I am so blessed and so honored to be guiding and facilitating this live chat today. And I have Rianne van der Linde, Claire Rumor, and Lisa Grace with me today, all our senior faculty at the Shakti Shiva Academy. And this magical academy is an online portal that's centered on mysticism, psychology, and sexuality, and with a significant focus on the exploration of awakened sexual energy as experienced in the human body. And today we have an opportunity to speak with these beautiful ladies about why it is that they do the work that they do and why each of them is drawn to doing this kind of work like moth to the flame. And we'll also have a chance to hear about why they are so passionate about sharing the sexual awakening and sexual shadow integration work in the world. And we will be specifically focusing on feminine sexual awakening today. So I'm super, super excited. And instead of going into more detailed introductions about each one of you, I would love for you simply just to explain to me, to us, to, to everybody who's watching this, why is it that you do this kind of work? Why are you drawn to the sexual awakening and sexual shadow integration work? And I would love for you, Claire, to start us off with this one. Absolutely. So for me, the way this journey has begun or did begin was that I was raised Catholic in the southern part of the United States. And back then I was fully committed and planning to become an architect. And well, that didn't work. It didn't work for me at all. And I veered off. Life sent me in a whole other direction, which was the study of sexuality. And that kind of came about as a leap of faith. And also as a realization of, I'd love to study something that I know the least about, having been raised Catholic, going to Catholic school for 13 years with an abstinence-based education. So something I know the least about, but want to know the most about because I could just feel there's so much to the realms of sexuality beyond just like sexual politics or you know, sexual tips and tricks in the bedroom and all the conventional sexual pieces. So for me, I was drawn like a moth to a flame to this deeper inquiry through academia first. And then once I moved to California, very much through the connections I made in the world of Tantra, conscious sexuality, spirituality, personal development. And then it's just been growing from there, uh, especially when I connected with our mentor. The three of us had the same teacher named Shakti Milan, who was the founder of the Shakti Shiva Academy. And briefly, when I connected with her, dropped in with her, had some beautiful conversations before I even began studying with her, I realized I want whatever that woman is having. <laughs> and so it just went from there and continues to unfold and be my path. Mm, beautiful. How inspiring. And, and to, to have the courage to take that leap of faith and to go from a career focused on architecture you know, becoming an architect and then moving into something that is seemingly completely the opposite in many ways. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into um, Shakti's life work and the work of the Academy in a moment. But before we do that, uh, Rianne, would you like to share a little bit about your journey and why you are drawn to this kind of work as well? Yeah, that's, um, thank you for asking. It's such a, a great question, Emmy. And for, for me, what, what really is my deepest knowing when I, when I look around me is that the reality is not that rigid and it's not that fixed. And that's really interesting for, for me because I feel, I feel like I have to take radical responsibility for my experience because what, what is in the arising, what's in the field is a direct result or is a direct reflection of what's happening inside me. And, and so this, this work has really been for me such a, um, a portal into the undoing and the unlayering of, of conditioning so that 
I'm feeling as I do the work, um, as I go deeper, more and more, my dance with reality, my dance with existence, like every moment has the potential to become a lovemaking with the moment, with existence. And I also feel like my interface with reality is being created from more and more the present moment rather than from my past, from the stories that I grew up with and the, the beliefs that I inherited through my culture, my family, my religion. And, and I just watch it all with such fascination um, as it kind of unfolds and as I do my personal work. And then as we also do the, our collective work, it's, that's what's really exciting for me is that it actually isn't that personal. You know, you get to a place where you realize that it isn't really that personal. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really ever grateful you know, to Shakti because it was with her that I really first experienced and tasted this quality of, um, of romancing the moment, of the moment being the beloved, of everything and everyone being the beloved. And it was an incredibly blissful experience for me. And I vowed to myself 10 or 12 years ago that I wanted to live like that, not just on retreats, but all the time. So that's kind of been what's really called me deeper and deeper into this journey. Mm, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing and, that. and I can hear quite a bit of echo. Thank you for muting yourself, Rian. Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely inspiring as well, that yearning and that wish and that desire to be fully present in each moment and really experience each moment as if you are making love to that moment. How inspiring is that? I really, really love that. Thank you. Yeah. Lisa, I would love to hear from you as well. Mm. Yes, all of that. Um, I also met Shakti about 10 years ago and remember encountering that work and she was just, uh, I now know it as transmission teaching of, of bringing in the call to the connection to the collective and to our own foundational truth. Um, to me, one of the concepts that keeps attracting me is the, the getting more comfort with discomfort and with the unknown and being able to lean in a little bit more closely to really broaden the spectrum. I mean, it's a magical skill to be able to lean in like that and allow for disruption, allow for reorganizing, allow for just completely letting go of the structure and ways that we've been enculturated or conditioned to be living. And really be, as Rianne said so beautifully, of the making love to the moment and recognizing how life is happening in each moment and that the letting go of that conditioning and the history and the, the uncomfortable self-awareness of all the shoulds and being able to just be in the equanimous, really the, the just holding of the present moment and be living in that flow is where vitality is. It's where everything is. And so the more I've gotten into sexuality, actually the, the less it feels specifically about sexuality and it's just being in the, the vitality of the right now moment mm -hmm. and everything that has to offer. And there is an eroticism in the authenticity available there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And I love how you've expanded the notion of sexuality there because even now in 2021, for a lot of people, sexuality is still a taboo and something that should not be talked about, should not be discussed. And, and to be able to see it in that context where it can help you to unlearn and get rid of that conditioning and really expand and elevate your experience in every moment. Oh, that's, that's beautiful as well. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. 
Um, I want to dive deeper into this theme of sexual awakening. But before we do that, I, I really feel like we should pay a little bit more homage to Shakti herself. Um, I also was very blessed to meet her once uh, about 12 years ago now, I think. And whilst she was also a participant in a training that I was doing at the time, I was just so struck by her presence and drawn to her and to her energy on so many levels and immediately felt this beautiful connection with her. But would you please um, tell us a little bit more about who Shakti was and how she came to establish the Shakti Shiva Academy as well? Who, who would like to take that? Is there an immediate yes in one of you <laughs> to answer that? <laughs> Brian, what if you were to? You, you might be the one who knew her the longest and certainly had the earliest connections in South Africa with her. Sure. Yeah. You know, Shakti was just a remarkable human being because she was just so total in, in her journey, in living her life about um, everything that she did. And she was so committed to, to waking up and to taking as many people on the ride and in her flight path as she possibly could. And she really, um, you know, she touched so many thousands of people worldwide in, in her work. And I think her power lay for me in her vulnerability. She never put herself on a pedestal or um, claimed to have arrived anywhere or to know anything. Um, she really was a fellow, a fellow seeker and a fellow traveler on this mystery ride. And you know, she just opened herself so totally that she really was a vehicle for ancient wisdom. I mean, she actually says, you know, no, nothing that I'm offering is new. It's not because of my cleverness. It's, it's just that the ancient wisdom moving through me as I open, as I let go of who I think I am, as I die to old beliefs, limiting beliefs, um, as I become more radiant, more alive and more present in this moment. So yeah, she, you know, she created an incredible body of teaching. Um, her work with the erotic, with sexual shadow is profound, is, um, it's tender, it's incredibly inclusive, it touches all aspects of our lives as Lisa pointed to, you know, sexuality as we know it, which becomes a, a, a genital interaction is really the tiniest part of, of our um, sexual experience. And this body of work that she's created, um, then there's also the Sexual Awakening for Women work. And she wrote a really pioneering book, Sexual Awakening for Women, a tantric workbook. And this body of work that she's, she's left is, um, we're just passionate about keeping making it available. And it's an incredible learning curve, certainly for me. And I know I speak for Claire and Lisa too. It's like, it keeps us deepening, growing, evolving, devolving, changing, dying, rebirthing. And I can't think of a more fabulous path to be on. And so I'm just really grateful for her presence in the world and for the way that she, she lived so fully and totally. Yeah. Beautiful. That is such a... But that feels, feels good, huh? Mm. Absolutely. That is such a beautiful way to, to describe Shakti uh, and... Um, to, to really get to her essence, to, to what she, who she was and what she was all about. And I, I just remember her, her energy, her bubbly, joyful energy that uh, was just ever expanding and all welcoming. It was just wonderful. And how special is it that you are continuing this work and really carrying on her legacy in such a beautiful and reverent way that really honors her work at, at such a deep level. So thank you for doing that. 
And to put in one little piece for those who never knew her or are just hearing about Shakti Milan for the first time right now, um, she did unfortunately pass away in 2017. Um, quite early, she was battling cancer, sadly. But we've made a whole website to honor her life. It's shaktimilanlegacy.com for those who would like to learn more about who this woman was, this teacher, this Dakini, who has influenced us and the work that we're putting, continuing to put into the world. Mm, beautiful. That. Thank you. Thank you for that, Claire. Yeah. Yeah, add one thing that is just when I think of Shakti is so prevalent and that was her capacity for unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really learned from her and in diving into this level of sensitivity and tenderness, vulnerability, taboo, all of these topics, it was like she could dive right in there with sometimes terrifying accuracy and depth. And then there would be this just dusting of delight and love on top of it that relaxed the soul into being like, okay, this is okay. I can actually be here in my totality. Mm, beautiful. Thank you for adding that as well, Lisa. Let us take a little bit of a deep dive now ourselves, okay, in terms of looking at sexual awakening and what it means, especially for women. What is sexual awakening, feminine sexual awakening all about? Claire, would you like to start us off on that one? Yeah, and I can share a, a, a personal piece from my journey as it relates to sexual awakening for women specifically. But from a young age, I was very disconnected and pretty disgruntled about being female, feminine, being in a, a, a female body. And um, I wasn't so much questioning my gender as I was, um, I could detect from an early age, the different ways that females are treated on the planet inside of patriarchy, the different ways the girls were treated than the boys when I was growing up. And I had the sense of, um, you know, it's going to be a harder road to walk being in this body. And just for some reason, I intuitively or instinctively knew that and was pretty ticked off and wanted to be one of the boys, wanted to be treated like one of the boys. So I disconnected from being female, feminine, girly, and really was a tomboy for so long. And then more in my early adulthood, identified more as androgynous because I just, I wasn't one of the guys but I didn't want to be one of the girls. So I was straddling some in-between place. And uh, that was just my compensation for it at the time. And it wasn't really until I met Shakti about 11 years ago um, that she helped me put the pieces together of this gendered, not just conversation, but gendered living because it actually happens inside of us. We have both the inner masculine essence and energies and thrusts and propulsions. And we also have this internal feminine energy and yin energy um, that every human on the planet has these energies inside. They're dancing. They're absolutely dancing and relating and our external relating relationships of whatever sort are reflecting back to us the quality of the relating between our inner masculine, inner feminine, at least that's how I view it. And with Shakti's help, began expanding my own. Oops, I think we might have lost Claire there for a moment. <laughs> I think her connection might be a little, there she's back. There we go. Sorry, we lost you for a moment. It's coming back now. Okay. Oh, no worries, yeah. no worries. So I was saying that is with Shakti's help that I became in touch with an understanding of how these gendered energies dance. Mm -hmm. inside of us and inside of me and began cultivating more of the sexual awakening and not just sexual awakening is really awakening feminine energy and um, a feminine essence in myself and I've been realizing over these 10 years of deep diving into this inquiry into this work that my specific flavor my specific you know stamp of feminine essence is going to is absolutely unique from everyone else's similar with lisa similar with Rianne, similar with you and me all of us 
And I was thinking I needed to be a cookie cutter woman. And there were certain criteria and, and ways of looking and ways of behaving. I was supposed to check off the list and they were just not authentic to me. They weren't true for me. And so part of the awakening really has been owning what my essence is as the feminine comes through me and that the masculine energy in me gets to be part of that also. It's not to the mm -hmm. exclusion of that at all. And then from there, it, in terms of sexual awakening, for me has been making contact with the more nuanced, subtler energies and just the softer way of being because out in life, I can be, you know, directing and moving fast through life and making things happen and in the bedroom I don't necessarily want to be in that mode and so owning and welcoming and being in my totality and getting to embrace those parts of myself fully and with complete joy has been part of this sexual awakening I don't need to be the conventional. I don't need to live into the traditional unless I want to, but in no way is it required anymore in my paradigm, thanks to this work. So that's a little, yeah, a little hint, a little piece of what it's meant to me. Mm, beautiful. And that's allowing yourself to fully surrender and, and be in that moment and let go of those inhibitions and the taboo kind of thinking around that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Lisa? How, how would you respond to that? What was the question again? I got so lost in Claire's. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. So it really was about sexual awakening, feminine sexual awakening, and, and what that means to you and how you've experienced that in, in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so relate to what Claire was sharing about in my childhood of being, you know, I was on the sports teams and with the boys until they were no longer co-ed and um, catching frogs in the mud and you know, doing all the, the things like that that felt exciting to me and then was really struggled against what was expected of women with that same frustration around the gendering. And when I found Shakti, it was through her soulmate within work mm -hmm. that um, really explores the dynamic of the inner masculine feminine dance. And, and it just, it's kind of, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Unexpected, uh, but I found that in truly honoring my masculine, is where it allowed my feminine to come through more fully. And I guess in that dance is also letting go of the expectation or letting go of some kind of goal or completely letting go of the stereotypes, especially of what it's supposed to look like for me to do any of this exploration and allowing the security of, of inherent in my own being to be fully present that allows such rich expression to come through. So it, it's completely letting go of the idea of, of what the feminine should mm -hmm. fit into or look like. I was afraid when Shakti started really exploring the, the feminine work that it would be like the flowers and pretty scents and, and being all in the flowy and, and just talking about our yonis. And, and that that would be the expectation. Um, but then discovering truly in the totality of having the fire and the depth of the power available in what is authentic for me. And the, the power of the feminine is in the receptivity quality. Um, when we're getting into polarity talk of the you know, the more penetrative and the, the receptive is where it really, um, the, the matchup energetically comes in. And so learning the dexterity and being able to play consciously with all those different expressions of energy. Mm, awesome. Goosebumps. <laughs> Just listening to you talk. That's beautiful. <laughs> Rianne, what would you like to add to that as well? 
Yeah, I, I'd like to just return to kind of where I started and to say that for me, it's so clear that our desire is the force that's creating the world. And so our, our sexual energy is a force of creation. And so it becomes like really, really important to ask ourselves or to fine tune, to hone what it is what is our desire? What do we really, 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 really want? And as female bodied beings, we've been specifically challenged in this arena because we've been brought up, many of us, and I'm making sweeping generalizations, but as objects of desire, as mm -hmm. um, you know, we respond to this, we re respond to a stimulus. And so for many, many women, getting clear on, on and knowing what it is that they want is actually very challenging. And it's so super important because how can we create the life, the world that we really, really want to live in if we don't even know what it is that we, we want, if we're so confused and we're moving from deep within the unconscious, which is continually driving us to you know, have the experiences that we were unable to fully metabolize and feel through so that we can do that, so that we can get clear, so that we can um, like sort the wheat from the chaff and have this really clear um, knowing about what it is we're creating. And so for me, the, the awakened sexual energy implies that we're we're aware and we're conscious and we're creating our reality. And that's my individual reality, but then there's shared reality and consensual reality. And this is how the game works. And you know, we're in the game. And, and um, I have a beautiful teacher, Asia Salem, who Shakti also sat with. Um, and she says, the only way to lose the game is not to play. And to play with more and more awareness feels to me like a no-brainer. And that is why we do this work, because we increase our capacity to stay present with ourselves, no matter what life brings towards us, no matter what's arising. We keep the breath moving. We stay present and grounded in our beautiful breathing bodies. And we don't dissociate. We don't abandon or reject or betray ourselves. That, just circling that, that is, that's it, you know? And, and for me, do this piece of, of um, women gathering, you know, like the pa this um, piece about the patriarchy, the thing for me is that, you know, male-bodied, female-bodied beings, we've all grown up in the same system and it's wounded us all, all different ways perhaps but we are all wounded male bodied beings in many ways i feel and it's just an opinion it's not a right or wrong perhaps are, are more lost and more um in more pain in in many ways than than women are and it feels to me that as women what we haven't quite got is that we are the heart of the patriarchy. We are the ones who keep the system in place, albeit unknowingly or unconsciously or not on purpose, but by colluding with the system to compete and compare and um, yeah, we, we're actually perpetuating the very thing that we claim not to want. And so for me doing this work, it's, it's, it's the only thing to be doing right now. It mm -hmm. it's enables me to walk with one face in the world. No matter where I am, no matter who I meet, I don't have to be this for, for this situation and I don't have to be this that for this other situation. And it's that, you know, it's that continual, um, continual, path of undoing and growing and, and finding out what, what is it that 
how, how was I wired in my childhood experience with my particular family, with my particular set of circumstances? What wired my beliefs about sexuality, about my self-worth, about who I am, what I'm capable of, and what limited me as well? So yeah, that's, I just get really excited because there's this exponential piece that as women, when we step towards and stop being victims of the patriarchy and actually claim our power, then the world will change. We are the ones who have the power. And it's fascinating to me that so few of us in female bodies are willing to claim that power. And so this is the fun and this is the journey and this is the collaboration and the dream of women coming together as a circle of sisterhood rather than as the women's union, um, which for me holds the key to incredible change on, on our planet actually. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for explaining that in more detail and yeah, I mean, this work really is about kicking patriarchy's butt <laughs> in the, many for ways. For the sake of all of us. <laughs> for the sake of all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yes. Well, Shakti Shiva Academy has a really exciting program starting in July, a nine-month sexual awakening for women online program. And I would love to hear a little bit more about that program and how when you take part in that program, how does it help you to, to unlearn this conditioning? How does it help you to expand in terms of your sexuality and the various facets of your sexuality? And how does it really bring together the sense of sacred sisterhood that Rianne was also alluding to? Claire, would you like to start us off on that one? Tell us a little sure. bit more about the program. Absolutely. So the program is nine modules. So there will be two classes per month and one module per month. So that's the, the framework, if you will. And then we do like to have study halls, which are times for informal gathering uh, once every trimester. So once every three months. We also do bonus calls where we have guest teachers come and teach. We have three amazing guest teachers for this round of Sexual Awakening for Women. We have Betty Martin, who many people will know from her work with consent and the wheel of consent and giving and receiving and mindful consensual touch. And we have a wonderful colleague of ours named Marsha Bashinsky, who will be talking about amongst other things, desire smuggling. And so what is it when we aren't in touch with what we really, really want, as in really, 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 really want, <laughs> really want. And then we try to go about getting it through back doors or sideways or shadow ways. And so that's the whole notion of desire smuggling. And Marsha's an amazing facilitator. She's also one of the creators of Cuddle Party for people who have heard of Cuddle Parties. She was one of the original creators of that. And then we have uh, Dakini Valentina Leo as our third teacher for this offering of Sexual Awakening for Women, who's gonna be teaching about, amongst other things, very feminine-based practices in the body and the sky dancing practices. And just her experience with feminine-based sexual expression, sexual awakening. And so that's the piece. And the sisterhood, it grows very organically. Because one thing we like to have, of course, is a Facebook group for the cohort. But also we like to have a WhatsApp group so that there can be discussions and connecting between the classes. And occasionally at the classes, we do breakout groups when time permits for people to connect more intimately. But we do a lot of shares. We like to reserve as much time as we can for people to share their personal experiences, different breakthroughs, different insights, different challenges they're having with the material. And that way we all get to share, learn and grow from each other's experience. And the reason this course is really special to me, all of our courses are special, but this one's particularly special is because you can't know the water that you've been swimming in or the air that you've been breathing uh, when it's been the environment you've grown up in. So we can't really 
we, we can't know it until a framework is given to us to help us understand how exactly these systems and structures and a lot of it being systems of oppression, you know, have locked us into identifications and playing small and believing ourselves to be disempowered. We can't ever break loose of it if we don't know that's the water we've been swimming in. And so we don't go into, you know, political theory or anything quite like that. But Shakti Milan did an amazing job of crafting frameworks for us to understand how this female body, biological body works, how it works physiologically, how it works energetically. A lot of times us women, we didn't receive that education and we didn't seek it. Mm -hmm. And so to have that material available is really important. And then frameworks also, maybe Rianne can speak about this a little more, Lisa as well, about the framework of the split between the virgin and the whore. So there's this dynamic, this push-pull between women who are expected to be very virginal and very proper and very appropriate and contained. And yet we have this essence and a drive when we tap into it to be connected more with our inner whore who is sexually free who is in touch with her sexual energy who is a very powerful source of self and then the women's union which Rianne mentioned being this archetypal group of energies that are like a, a women's club keeping us in line like no 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 keep your legs crossed you know keep your legs closed and wear that not that and behave this way not that way and we talk a lot about that in some of the modules but so that's the, the framing. And I'd love for Lisa and Rianne to share more your sense of the program from its heart and essence, why it's so powerful. Great, thank you. Which one of you would like to chip in on that one? <laughs> Lisa, do you want to? <laughs> okay, that's a very um, clear pointer. <laughs> I'll just make a... a kind of a quick comment I think of if I were to make a, a succinct through line of this work for myself it's to listen to your body listen ever more carefully and then believe what you hear and then to live it with an open heart um, first of all, finding the, the total complete love for yourself and for others. And of course, in the work of non-duality of finding that connectivity to all that is. And so there's not so much separation in, in the binary, but that in exploring the extremes of the binaries that can actually find the true alchemy of the, the totality. Mm -hmm. And so that's just listening to the body and believing what you hear and then living through an open heart. Mm. Thank you. Rianne, would you like to add something to that? Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, just to say that, you know, the nine months is kind of metaphorical, of course, because that's what it takes to you know, create and grow and gestate and then birth a baby into the world. And, and what we're really doing is we're birthing ourselves. And then what we discover as we birth ourselves is that we're also birthing each other. And that's really a rich, a rich um, container to be a part of. And what I love about the work is that, um, you know, it's not, it's not intellectual or academic, and yet the content is incredibly rich but it focuses on the experiential. So it's really about your living, loving life, your messy human life, you know, your triumphs and your, your messes and your failures. It's, it's um, includes everything and really an opportunity to, to discover alongside other women, how similar so much of our experience is, um, you know, we, we do a lot of, um, we look, work with polarities a lot and there's something really incredible that happens at, as each polarity is considered and then the opposites have that opportunity to unite and then there's a transcendence um, and then that becomes your lived experience. 
Um, we do a lot of work around the, and when I say work, it's not work at all. It's just loving self, falling more deeply in love with ourselves really as we, as we go. But um, we, we, we really look at the, the virgin and the whore and the woman's union. We look at the shadow side and then we look at the dream, the dream of that. And we look at our wildness and our untamedness and our elemental sexuality that for most of us, you know, we, we've used dimmer switches our whole lives. We've turned ourselves down, we've turned ourselves off. Um, and it, it's also very tender because many of, of the, the women who come to the work very highly have a lot of mastery in areas of the masculine and in the world. And yet they're feeling deeply unsatisfied at another, at another level. And they're really realizing that, you know, this uber efficiency and, and goal orient, oriented way that all of us have been brought up is not working and and that we need to bring in the relatedness and the receptivity and so the course is kind of it's circular it's not that linear there isn't a goal of somewhere to arrive it really is a work in progress and that is each individual who who is in the pot basically each of us um are co-creating the space together, which we of course um, hold, but it's a beautiful revealing of, of what we can, of our potential as women, when we really start agreeing to feel everything, to be vulnerable and to be honest. I think in my experience of the work, when, when we, we um, have our calls and women get an opportunity to share is what touches people the most is to hear each other's incredible raw real vulnerability and just that when people are bringing in things like shame or lack of desire numbness um, to hear that just blows your heart open you know when there's such deep authenticity the body responds like that and yeah, gosh, I could say so much more because there's so much content actually over the nine months, but there's a sales page. And of course you can go and read up about what each module focuses on if you're interested. And that would be beautiful to, to do if, you, if this is interesting, if this work is interesting for you. Yeah, mm, absolutely. Um, what, what, what is the best place to find out more about this program? Emmy, um, I think you need to pop the link in for for the sales page. If you could do that, um, or add it to add it to the chat. Yeah, but it, you can sure. also just go to the Sugar Fever Academy and um, so on the event, the courses you will see. So in fact, on the land on the home page, it's right at the top. Exactly, and exactly, and that website is shaktishiva.academy. And it'll be right at the top or linked through the courses. Mm, beautiful. And, and of course, for those of you who are part of the Feminine Revered community, there is also a special 10% discount. Uh, if you are feeling called to join this amazing program, then um, I will post a link to, to this offer as well. And you're welcome to have a look at the program in more detail. Uh, but Lisa, I would love to hear a little bit more from you in terms of who is this program for? Who, who are you targeting with this program? Who should participate? Mm. Uh, just something that's been so tremendous about this program is how many countries are represented in the groups that come together. And so it really makes for a unique and powerful experience. It's, it's like you can feel the web around the globe and touching on this collective experience and it does attract women that are totally new like leaving long-term marriages or relationships where they have been so contained and just stepping into this awakening and there's women who have been in practices for years but just something is not quite reaching 
into the core of the awakening. But as Rianne says, it's also, it's not a linear practice. So there's women who have retaken the program multiple times um, because there's, there's just more depth and richness and more to be explored uh, throughout the dance. It all, all keeps shifting. And just, but having that international net, it also is amazing for, for, as Claire was saying, about giving the framework of the things that we've taken for granted in our conditioning. And through the sharings of seeing these things that have been normalized in different cultures, and it kind of can awaken you to what we take for granted as being in place. So it's really such a potent container to have this level of sharing, to have it on a global level and to have such the range of expressions. So I, it's like it's held in all manner. Mm, beautiful. So essentially it is for all and every woman who is intrigued about sexuality awakening their feminine sexual essence and, and keen to explore the kinds of issues that you have all so beautifully described in this chat uh, at, at a deeper level, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we do want to acknowledge the obvious, which is um, we are the three facilitators. We are white women. And so obviously our experience does not encapsulate the experience of women in general. And we do our absolute best, given that, that we open and, and be as inclusive of any and all who are drawn to this work, to this program, to our, to our school, to the essence of uh, Shakti's legacy, you know, to be as inclusive as possible and to be as open and curious about other women's experiences so that it is this melting mm -hmm. pot of sharing and learning from each other. That's really the most important piece. Beautiful. That's beautiful. And what would you say are, from your experience of running this program in the past and from your own experience as well, what would you say is the most mind-blowing result or transformation that you, you have seen whilst doing this work? Would you be able to even respond to something like that? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's truly so big. I'll take a stab at it and then I'd love to hear from the others. The piece that's really exciting for me, for me personally, has been learning how to work with polarities. Rianne mentioned that, but polarities being oppositional forces that occur when we choose one thing and push away something else. So uh, at times we might, for example, in the context of this work, choose to be more of the virgin who's pure and innocent and proper and and push away the whore because she's bad and you know, will have us classified as some horrendous creature. And so we create this polarized split, but inside of doing polarity work, which is intended to bring those opposites together into relationship and help them transcend their oppositional antagonism and transform into the totality we keep naming into, to, mm -hmm. into where we have access to the entire key piano keyboard you know we can play the the expressions of the virgin over here when needed when we want to and we're drawn to her innocence her purity her curiosity and the freshness of her energy and then the whore that beautiful archetypal energy who is she loves every bit of herself she has this adoration for being alive and experiencing life in this primal way and you know these are my descriptions of her for myself and you know, so for me, that's a big takeaway from this program amongst many things has been having my inner virgin archetype and inner whore archetype come together and learn to play and love each other and be in connection and, and have access to that broad, broad totality of expression mm -hmm. in that way. So that's my little piece and a big takeaway for me. And I love sharing that. What about you two? I, I could share, I mean, one could make all sorts of promises, of course, that are hard to keep. But um, <laughs> what I can say is 100% that if you do this work, if you did this course, that you 
the result is that you become more of who you really are, whatever that is for you, the individual. And that's profound. That's radical transformation and it's radical permission to live your life as yourself. And you, I can just feel the energy of, of that. And we've seen, of certainly it's been the case for me in my own life. And I see it in all, all the people who are doing this work, um, men and women, but particularly in the, in the women's work, um, ra radical, magical, life transforming, um, like transmutations. It's just like incredible healing, opening, um, opening to the incredible pleasure and bliss and magic and fascinating awe and wonderment of being in a body and creating creating our lives, creating our experiences, relating like that intimacy in the relational field that deepens as we do the work. Um, it's pff, kind of priceless actually. That's mm. how I would how I would say. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. And how about you, Lisa? Um, I was just getting an image of um I feel this work, all the shadow work and this work of like taking a flashlight into the little corners of self and, and inviting all of that material out and into the light to be welcomed and integrated. All of the little, the shame, all the shoved down pieces and all those parts of self that have gotten the message that there's something not okay about actually being recognized and felt. And so it's the, the the dance of inviting all those little pieces out to then be integrated and be expressed and be part of this, um, as Rian said, be more of who you really are because it's nothing, nothing doesn't belong. Mm. It's, it's all part of us. It's all part of existence. Mm. Beautiful. That was so gracefully said. Thank you, Lisa, for expanding on that. And one thing that I realized we haven't covered yet is when does the program actually start? And if our listeners, our watchers are intrigued and would like to find out more, when would they be expecting to jump on this boat and start exploring? Absolutely. Well, the first class is on Thursday, the 15th of July. And so it'll be mid March, uh, excuse me, mid July that the program begins officially and formally. We'll close registration on the 14th of July. However, the first module will be available starting July 1st. So for anyone okay. who registers before the 14th, the first module of material will be available to begin reading and familiarizing yourself with. And, and then from there, we'll have two classes per month for the nine months. So we'll be starting July 15th formally. Awesome. Beautiful. Well, thank you. I, I could talk to you about this for hours and hours and hours, but I do realize that we need to start wrapping up now. But I would really just love to thank each and every one of you for sharing so openly and so expansively and so gracefully about your own, ex own experience with this feminine sexual awakening and about you know, this program, this beautiful program that is coming up and for joining me for this hour, this live chat. I'm very grateful to have had this time with you again. All of you have appeared on the Sacred Feminine Power podcast. And I think what I might actually do is, is link the interviews for each one of you to this um, information about this talk as well, because there's some beautiful, yummy, delicious stuff from those interviews as well that I'm sure will bring a lot of inspiration and awakening to the listeners as well. And I will definitely also post a link for the 10% discount for those of you who are interested in joining this program and finding more. So you can click on that link and then read up on the program and find out more. So Rianne, Claire and Lisa, thank you so, so much 
appreciate every single one of you and wishing you all the best for this beautiful program. Thank you, Emmy. It's always Emmy. so great to be with you. Thanks, Thank Emmy. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Love. <laughs>